Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, hello everyone. So I've been sick. Um, as you can tell, I'm a little nasally, okay? So I've had a cold. Our place has also been under construction. We've had contractors like in and out. So life is a mess, but I came out of my slumber out of my sleeping and playing Halo and freaking out about life and comforting my cat from noise to talk about one specific ting. Ting? Ting? I can't talk. <laughs> it's been so long since I've made a video. I can't talk and I've turned British. I'm not 100% but I'm getting there, a little stressed out, but perfect mood to come to you guys with a rant, a very specific rant about the new Dell XPS Plus, 13 Plus. Plus, yes, plus. And then we're also going to get into some new laptops that just came out, announced at CES, that are coming out later this year. Um, Cause I kind of want to like plan out some of my coverage so you guys can let me know what laptops you want to see. Okay, so we need some context with like Dell and the landscape that we're in with the MacBook. Okay, so I would say I spent like 2017 until the beginning of 2019 just calling out the MacBook on how terrible it was. The butterfly keyboards, the terrible cooling, the thin chassis that again affected the cooling, um, touch bar, like so many things, right? And no matter what you thought about the old MacBooks, um, you know, maybe you were like, I was fine with USB-C, I don't care about ports, I like the touch bar, etc. Not having ports, having that dumb touch bar instead of function buttons, all of those things that I was roasting for several years, turns out Apple agrees and they corrected their ways. And now we have the new uh, M1 Pro, M1 Max, MacBooks, um, and they're great, right? So when a company is making, oh, kitty, kitty, hi, hold on, close the door. But then when he hears my voice, he always has to come in. Oh, you okay? You okay? Do you want to say hi to the Peachy fam? So when companies are being lame, we got to call them out, right? And then when they correct their mistakes and they're doing good, yay, we can cheer them on, right? And so I feel like I'm seeing a pattern with Dell right now. Okay, so I loved their new redesign of the XPS. Where are you going, Kitty? Okay, Kitty, I just started filming. It took a lot of, it just took a lot of energy to get me to this point and now you're kind of ruining it. Cause you know, your girl's not feeling the best, so. Okay, all right. So last year we got a clean new redesign of the XPS. We got the 17 inch SKU, we got the SD card slot, yay. Um, things are going in the right direction. And as one of the biggest XPS fans, I was really excited for this, but I was just like overall disappointed by um, some quality control stuff, like the freaking trackpad. It just wasn't working properly for me and, and you know, other random things. But hopefully those are things that Dell can fix. I feel like they're on the right track with the normal uh, Dell XPS 13, 15, and 17 inch models. And then CES happens and they release the Dell XPS 13 Plus, which is a very like sexy laptop, I have to say. At first glance, you're like, that's pretty good looking. This Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, look how thin it is. Um, it's it, like, this was my computer for a while. I just love uh, two-in-ones that are thin, lightweight, and multifunctional. With the flip screen, grab my pen, write some notes in OneNote, boom, love it. Edit a photo in Lightroom, great. The minimum bezels, we love to see it. Okay, so some of the stuff that we love about the XPS line is um, carried over into this plus. We have a similar form factor on the outside. It's not a two-in-one, it's the 13 inch model um, and it also has the infinity edge display so the display is gorgeous and that's kind of where things stop so they did a lot of physical changes okay so the the keys run flush to the end of the laptop i will say i actually really love the look of this i just don't know how practical it is it has a very small distance to travel when you clack on the keys but also i don't know i just feel like keys are kind of separated for a reason to differentiate which key that you're pressing. <laughs> and so for them to be so close, it looks cool, but in practice, I don't know how it's gonna feel until I have it in my hands. By the way, this is just a rant. I don't have the actual new plus because it comes out in the spring. Okay, cool, whatever. We could probably get past that, right? Um, it has the updated Intel's 28 watt 12th gen processors, much more powerful than the previous 15 watt iterations. And this is where things kind of go 
go downhill, okay? So we got like absolutely no ports, which I will say isn't that different, um, but we used to have a micro SD slot. Honestly, I rarely use the micro SD slot, but some people use it to expand the storage uh, within their computer. So we're left with only two USB-C ports, which is kind of like, okay, whatever. It's a lightweight device. I don't expect to have like an HDMI or USB-A. I understand this USB-C world that we're living in, although having ports is really great. It's one of the reasons why I switched to Windows and it's one of the reasons why I love the new MacBooks. So that's not what I'm angry about, the micro SD. I'm angry, they took, guys, okay, hold on. They took away the headphone jack. Courage, no headphone jack on a laptop. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm on my computer, especially at my desktop, I very rarely use Bluetooth on my desktop, but even laptops, a lot of the times I'm wired, even if it's like crappy earphones. And the thing, if you video edit, you never want to introduce Bluetooth into your workflow because that millisecond off of the timing can really destroy your edit if you're lining things up for music, etc. But let's even take the creative component out of it. Even if you're not editing videos, it's a very normal thing to have headphones with wires that you plug into a computer, that you plug into a laptop. Just the, there is not as seamless of a process when it comes to Bluetooth headphones, connecting them to computers as it is with your phone. It's, it's just, it's not there yet. I feel like we're just getting into things and like, as I'm talking, I'm like, okay, maybe they did this on purpose. So people would just be really angry and just like stir up things. And then, you know, Dell XPS would be on the tech news headlines, but not a lot of people are talking about this computer. And the few people that were at CES, um, some of the articles I've read, they're like being very, how should I say, like timid. They're like, well, there's no headphone jack, haha, but I guess that's the world we're living in. No, we've learned with Apple, if we yell, loud enough and long enough, these companies might listen because we're the people buying the products. So I'm gonna say, no, I'm gonna say a pass on no headphone jack. There's room, keep headphone jacks and laptops, okay? Okay. I mean, again, you can have a dongle, you can have a, a headphone jack to USB-C dongle, but dongle world. Ooh, kitty, yeah, you don't like dongle life either, right? Okay, so next thing is they have a capacitive touch function row of buttons. So you don't have a physical key for the volume, for the skip button, for the, the brightness buttons, right? And it's just, it's, it's not even like a touch bar. So it's like, even with the touch bar, there, there were things that people used it for outside of those buttons, right? Uh, scrolling in a final cut or logic timeline. So I will give you that there's people who love the touch bar because hey, emojis can pop on there or, or things can animate on there. It was kind of multi, use. I never used it. I just used it, you know, to raise the volume up and then it froze on me and I had to restart the computer. So on this new Dell XPS 13 plus, no physical buttons for, for that row of function keys. There's no extra functionality that the MacBook touch bar actually brought, even though I hated it. There was some elements of newness and there's a reason for it, but they're just like, yeah, it looks cool, which it does. It looks cool. It's just like, well, is this gonna freeze up on people? Probably less likely than the Mac Touch Bar since it did do a lot of different things and it spazzed out on you a lot. So maybe that's the advantage of having this form of, of touch buttons and maybe they'll work all the time and that's great. But again, for me, physical buttons, it's much easier. So I just, I'm just like, man, this is dumb too. And then the third and maybe final thing, probably not <coughs> final thing, is the trackpad design. So again, all of these things look really cool. From a distance, you're like, wow, what a futuristic piece of tech, right? So there's like no trackpad, but it's like hidden in the bottom bar of the laptop, okay? So you don't know where the trackpad starts and ends. The entire bottom of the keyboard isn't a trackpad. It's still centered in the middle, but there's no designation that tells you, hey, this is a trackpad. So you kind of have to guess where the trackpad is all the time. And I'm like, Okay, so we're at the point where we're sacrificing function for looks again. And there's so many good examples out there now in Mac and Windows land where now function has met form and there's a great balance between that with other laptops that I, I want companies to do different things and step outside the box like with all the foldables that we're seeing super cool, but on just things that have to function for a reliable laptop for you to get your work done, 
that stuff, I'm like, maybe don't mess with that. And the biggest thing that makes me nervous about this hidden trackpad is Dell has had issues with normal trackpads. So I'm like, what makes you think that this is going to be a better experience if they struggle with the normal trackpads? I don't know. Okay, so the Dell XPS 13 Plus, I obviously am very opinionated about this, um, but you guys have to let me know, is this something that I should actually review and have in my hands? Um, because I can already tell you that it's probably not something that I would recommend to people. So maybe roasting it once is already fine. So I wanna tell you about some other cool laptops that are coming out if you'll hang out with me for a little bit longer. Also, one more thing, the Dell XPS 13 Plus, it's obviously like an add-on. They're not replacing the normal Dell XPS 13. That'll still be there. Um, they still have the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. So they're obviously experimenting. I would just like to kind of put a stake in a road now and just be like, if other people don't like this, maybe we should say something about it. Um, so people like over in Macland don't have to endure stupid features for four years. Am I right guys or am I right? Okay, Lenovo, Asus, Razer released all really cool stuff. And also, you know who's always releasing cool stuff? Squarespace. Thank you for sponsoring this video. Can you do my Squarespace hat? Cause I'm so sick, babe. Oh, there are no hot dogs. You're not looking too hot either. I'm dying. We're uh, really sick. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you are a creative and you need to build a portfolio, Squarespace is the perfect place to start building out your resume for future creative careers. They have award-winning <laughs> templates, email campaigns. Wow, John, thank you so much for starting for starting that out, saradichi.com, I use it personally as my creative portfolio, but also if you have a e-commerce brand, if you sell merch, if you sell really anything, they have so many great tools that can integrate into your website that makes things super easy. It's compatible with so many third-party extensions like ShipStation and QuickBooks. Another great tool that you can use is Squarespace Scheduling. So I personally use this for a rental space where individual clients can book effortlessly on our own website instead of having to go to third party websites that take really massive fees. You can keep all of the money to yourself minus the payment processor fee. And it's just so easy to set up. And the great part about Squarespace is they have an amazing website. I mean, they better. They better have an amazing website, right? So just at a quick glance, you can see all of these other amazing resources available to you, like email marketing, SEO, beautiful templates specific to your field, options for payments. And what the heck is this that I'm just seeing? Squarespace video, Squarespace video studio. See, this is what I'm talking about. So they're also helping you make beautiful brand videos for your website. They do all the things. Always releasing new features. They're just killing it. So if you want to check it out, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to jump in, go to squarespace.com slash saradici. That's me for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. Okay. So let's start with Lenovo, okay guys? So the ThinkBook Plus Gen 3. I'm gonna give this an award. I'm gonna give this the most interesting at CES, but probably uh, kind of stupid, okay? So this ThinkBook has an eight inch screen on the right of the keyboard. So it's a 17 inch laptop, eight inch screen on the keyboard. Um, we've seen, you know, multiple different screens and things on laptops like the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo, which I have actually been a huge fan of. I really enjoy that laptop. But this, I don't know about this. They gave the use case of like, hey, you can take a pen and write notes while you're doing work on your main screen. I don't know. Does that sound like something that you would do? I guess I can't knock it until I try it, but hey, good job on doing something new. It seems kind of silly. Windows laptops are kind of going ham right now. They've been going ham and I'm enjoying it. Another update from Lenovo. It's a little less quirky, but it is very welcome. So the ThinkPad X1 Carbon and the X1 Nano got better webcams, OLED displays, and the new Intel 12th gen core processor. So I will say I've been using some ThinkPads in this most recent year and I get a lot of devices that come in and out. But the one that I literally think about probably every other day, like, oh man, it'd be nice to like actually use that, have that laptop back. Cause a lot of times I'm just loan laptops to do videos about is the Nano. So the X1 Nano is actually pretty pricey if you just go to their website and you buy it because it's on sale a lot. So you want to catch it on a sale. But the only gripe that I have with that laptop was the webcam. It wasn't the best. So I love to see better webcams, bigger sensor, 
But that laptop, the, the whole thing is, a, it's like the lightest ThinkPad ever. One of the lightest of 13 inch laptops I have ever used. And like when you hold it and it's just, it literally, it feels like a feather, like a laptop feather. There is just something so fun about a laptop like that. I, I don't know. I was kind of obsessed with it and I should have just bought one. I should have kept it, but I'm really looking forward to these, these new updates. So um, they're minor upgrades, but they're very welcome. Razer announced all new Blade laptops. Big fan of these, especially for you gaming and creative hybrids. So they're still focused on that desktop class performance in the same sleek design. You know, we have that beautiful aluminum chassis, very kind of MacBook-like. So not much has changed aesthetically, but they are upgrading the internals. So the latest NVIDIA RTX 30 series GPUs, the fast GDDR6 memory, and the latest 12th gen Intel Core <laughs> Core H series processors. Judy just brought me his toy. Oh, you want to play? So it's a crumpled up Starbucks bag. Um, he uses it as a soccer ball. Here, Judy. Oh, oh. Oh, he's a soccer kitty. So remember when we're talking about H series processors, when they're coming from Intel, that's like desktop like performance in a laptop. So that comes in the 15 and 17 inch versions of the blades. And then we have the latest Ryzen 9 in the 14 inch model. So lots of great choices there. And I'm saving one of the coolest for last. So Asus is coming out with a 17 inch foldable OLED laptop. This thing, when I saw it pop up in my Twitter feed, I was like, I want that. That looks gorgeous. This looks so fun. And for those out there giggling, haha, <laughs> hey Sarah, aren't all laptops foldable? But uh, okay guys, I've heard this so many times. When are you ever like, hey friend, I got one of those foldable computers. Uh, you mean a laptop? Yeah, laptops are foldable, yes but no one calls them that. So from here on out, when I say foldable, I mean folding displays, right? The future, foldable phones, foldable laptops, foldable tablets, it's all very exciting. I feel like this tech is so cool. Obviously it's not there yet, but it's like new. It's pushing the boundaries, right? This is the ThinkPad X1 fold. Um, it feels like a book, right? But then you fold it out, oh my gosh. And look, it's an entire display, which doesn't seem to be formatting correctly, weird. Why is it not filling the whole the whole screen? But see what I'm saying? Things are a little quirky over in foldable land, right? So I feel like a 17 inch version of this, is it gonna be clunky? I don't know, cause it looks pretty clean. That would like be the ultimate entertainment device on the go, right? It folds down to a smaller size. You can transport it, unfold it, and boom, you have a beautiful display to watch all the things on the plane, in a hotel room, or in the back of an Uber. I don't know, I don't know what you do. And also for the ladies who carry everything around in a purse, in a tiny purse, you know, these foldable devices are going to be great for that, right? I feel seen. And you know, anyone who uses just a smaller bag, I really like the idea of foldables, not necessarily like laptops that are foldables. I'm surprised there's not more like tablets, foldable tablets, because man, I would love an iPad. I would love even a Samsung tab that just folds down to a smaller size, but folds out to a normal tablet size um, to watch things on the go. And obviously the biggest downside for these types of devices is, well, they're new. So things are a little clunky with the UI, the performance, the battery performance, but hopefully the Asus foldable will be a good step in the right direction for the future of foldables. And so the last thing I want to end on is this isn't specific to one laptop, but Intel has come out swinging. This is a great example of when capitalism is actually pretty good competition 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 when one company gets a little lazy they get a little comfortable that's when some competitors come along like AMD like Apple they step in and make super fast chips and then now that incumbent company has to be like oh we need to step things up right and the consumer wins so apparently Intel claims that their new 12th gen core processor specifically their i9 for their laptops is faster than Apple's M1 Max chip. In addition to that, they claim it's the fastest mobile processor ever. That is like, it's a very bold claim, right? So it continues with the similar processor theme that we've seen where there's a combination of both performance and efficiency cores. It has a max turbo boost of five gigahertz, but, 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 this power draw though, okay? It can reach up to 115 watts. So it is very power hungry. So it probably needs more cooling than what a MacBook would need. And well, 
how is that battery life going to be? That's something that I definitely want to test. So guys, I cannot believe that I made it to the end of this video. It actually feels kind of good to talk to you guys again. Um, after this, I'm probably just going to drink tea and um, shrivel up in a corner and go to bed. <laughs> so we're going to be cramming in a lot of videos um, at the end of January, just because usually I space them out, but because I was feeling bad, I wasn't able to do that. So some that I filmed before getting sick, some after, and you'll just have a lot of videos to enjoy over the next couple weeks. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like that button, check out my Squarespace link in the description below, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, stay peachy. Okay, bye.